Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the squad announcement. Uh, lines were announced last week. What did you guys make of it? Jerry, I'll start with you. Um, I get excited every time the Lions comes around. And, you know, having been there waiting to find out whether you're going to make the squad, we haven't had a load of rugby, so it's hard to get some context. Uh, I, I think the team looks... It's not full of superstars. I mean, if you look at the Lions squad, how many would you, without argument, would get into a World 15 right now? So I think the Lions this year will go into South Africa a little bit under the radar. I don't think the box will feel this Lions squad is a huge threat, which will be brilliant for them, because that's exactly as they saw us in 97. And we, we know what happened there. Back in the day, did the players get to find out before the general public did? Was that the, and then did it change or? Yeah, certainly in 89, we, we knew as players, we, you were, you were, I've, I, it was, that was my first one. So, and, and my memory's not great, but I, I'm pretty sure I got a nudge from Jack Ra, the coach saying that uh, because Will Carling had pulled out with injury, uh, Ian McGeekin had been on the phone to Jack Ra uh, and said, and started talking about myself. Um, so Jack gave me the nudge. The next thing I got a phone call Oh, blimey, this is embarrassing. Uh, Keith Rowlands, the, uh, the manager in 89, saying that I was going to be selected. Uh, congratulations. But I, I really didn't believe it was him. I th John Morrison was second row at Bath, and he was quite good at accents, and he was, he was always winding people up. And I, re I thought that it was him to begin with. <laughs> uh, I, luckily, I didn't swear or put the phone down. I just let it go on and on and on and realised, well, there's no way Morrison could keep this accent up for this long. Uh, so I actually believe that. 93 might have been teletext. 97 was definitely sky. But you, uh, from 93 to, 90, to 97, you, unless you knew the coaches pretty well, he might have given you a little bit of a nudge and a steer. You had no idea. The game turned professional in 95, didn't it? So you've, you've done tours in both the amateur era and professional era. I have, and I've done, you know, the, the best years of touring is without social media, without a doubt. And I've, we've, we managed that. Yeah, yeah well, fair play. I know, I've got it. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm very jealous. So, 09, it was just coming in. I think we were the last of the old school, like without social media, we were last of the kind of touring lions that every second, you know, lads didn't have their phone out recording everything or they were on their phones all the time. Big difference uh, four years later. Um, but yeah, I'm very envious you got to tour the Lions in the amateur era. We'll find out more about that in a bit. Well, I think a big part of that is I'm guessing that they don't like telling anyone they're in now because everything gets out. The teams get leaked. Everything gets out there, doesn't it, nowadays? So I actually love that. I think that's... You saw some of the reactions from some of the guys in their clubs. Like, we all sat around. Guys had the option. You could sit with the boys or go and sit in the car. And Ali Price sat outside in his car because he couldn't handle it whereas Anna Fagerson was in with us and I just love watching those back I think that's awesome seeing the boys celebrate with each other I think that's such a cool way to find it's out it's bittersweet because you can be the you know you're the one who gets selected right, and yeah. a, a good mate a good club colleague doesn't so uh, you know what yeah. what is the right way I mean the, the way now the suspense on TV or however they're going to broadcast it is brilliant for the fans not great for the players <laughs> Oh, it's savage. It's savage for the players. And I look, I feel for some other, and as you said, Jerry, it is bittersweet. And for everyone that makes it, there's another player that's massively disappointed to miss out. Like emotionally, it's it's difficult. I remember four years ago, Sky, the night before the, they announced it, announced that I was going. Right? <laughs> I don't know if you remember it. So they came out and said, oh, Robert's to be selected for the Lions. Right? So all my mates and my family are texting me. Um, saying, oh, well done, mate, awesome third tour. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Half of me is thinking, ah, I'm not going to believe the bullshit. The other half of me is thinking, there's no smoke without fire, right? But they wouldn't, wouldn't run the story otherwise. So I haven't slept at all that night. And I've kind of gone in and a few of the lads are like, oh, well done, man, awesome. And I'm like, boys, oh, nightmare. Man. Lo and behold, I wasn't in the squad. And it was savage. I, I oh, so man. It was so, so savage. But luckily, I, I reflect, I'm lucky to go on a couple of tours. But... Emotionally, for some of those lads, you know, someone like Danny Kerr this year, you know, the media were just chucking his name around left, right, and centre, weren't they? Um, and and other lads, we've all seen Carl Sinclair's interview down at the wreck on the weekend. 
you know, when your name is chucked about there, you can't escape it as a player. Whenever you're all your mates, all your families messaging you saying, oh, we're getting really excited. And then you get let down. It's really, really difficult. But that's the way it should be. The line should be about, you know, the top players getting picked. And ultimately, that means a lot of players are going to miss out. We live in environments that we've mm-hmm. always lived in environment from the time you play mini rugby, junior rugby, to you get to the top the international, then onto the lines. We're selected on ability for the most part, nine time, nine, 99% of the time you are selected on your ability. The Lions, even so, much more. And, you know, the, the guys who didn't play well during the Six Nations put themselves at risk. You know, you have, if you play at your skin, you are pretty much guaranteed. I mean, it, although someone like Hamish Watson, although he was player of the Six Nations, there's so much competition in, in the back row, but he stood out and he put himself right up for selection and if he wasn't selected there would have been a bit of a backlash so the guys that didn't make it really most of the in most part didn't play well enough who are you all most excited now to watch lewis reese zamet uh, i think uh, you know 18 months ago would anybody have thought that young man would be uh, selected for the squad to go to south africa it's uh, oh it's what dreams are made of uh, he was so exciting during the Six Nations, um, and he won't believe what's what's happening to him right now. His try against Scotland, where he was full pelt, kicked the ball. Yeah, he got the banks, but he deserved the banks because he had a go. He wasn't scared to have a go, and it was absolutely fantastic and brilliant to watch. And I think everybody who's ever played r- rugby, you watch Lewis play, and it reminds you of being a kid and how you first played and how much you enjoyed it. So I think as long as he can, he doesn't get overwhelmed by the aura of the Lions, because it can be a weight to carry. He doesn't think about it too much, continues in the vein that he has. I, I, he will love it. And don't go with the expectation of being the test team. Don't put that pressure on yourself. Listen to all those much more experienced players around you, much in the same way as he has done whilst playing for Wales and being part of the, the Gloucester team. And just go there. And if it happens, it happens. But just try and enjoy that whole experience. It, He'll love it. He's Mine proper quick. He is proper quick, man. Did, Jerry, did you play oh, with anyone that quick? You, Does he, Jamie, oh, compared to me. Team, yeah. <laughs> oh, but, Jesus, I'll be one-on-one against Lewis from Zamet. Jesus, God help me. Um, I, I reckon he'd catch me up. If I had halfway to try line interception, I reckon he'd catch me from our try line. He'd, he'd burn me. I mean, it looks effortless, doesn't it? That's the beauty of the lad. He's running. He looks like he's jogging. I say, would you... Would you um, with you professionals, it's kind of, I mean, you've always looked big, Jamie, you know, like six foot four, 16 and a half, 17 stone, but, you know, lean. I remember seeing you guys first at the, at the old millennium and the, the back line that you had in, in your palm was just, I thought, you know, I really shouldn't be playing. No, I'm glad I'm not playing rugby against guys your size. Um, and we've become accustomed to the leanness of, of rugby players. Honestly, Lewis looks average he he looks relatively small on the rugby field but then you see him up against the big guys in the forwards i mean the guy's six foot two six foot three and he's nearly 16 stone and he can motor like that i still take Uh, him on a flat you know straight race (laughs) i'm pretty sure i'd take him (laughs) (laughs) we should definitely set that one up he's a a good he's a he's a good build 